Welcome to the Mindset by Design podcast with your host, the expert Andy Murphy, where you will learn the tips, tricks, and strategies he teaches his world-class clients to give you the skills to dominate any business. What's going on, Mindset by Design crew, and welcome to episode 289. Hope you're amazing, as always, and life is treating you good. If not, well, do you know what? We've all been in those situations. We've all been in those moments. I remember quite a few years ago now that, um, well, I got myself into a bit of a situation. It's quite a few years ago now. I've been in lots of situations, as I'm sure you have, but it's, it was crazy because I hired a development company. I put all my money in. They let me down, they didn't perform, they lied, they cheated, they stole, they did all those things, right? I wasn't taking on clients at the time, I didn't have any other income streams happening, the investments, etc. Guess what? Well, that was a bit of a rough time, you know? Um, it was going back to, I think I had a few grand in the bank, that was it, and there was I had less money than there was bills, and it was interesting. Because it's in those moments that I've been in many times before in my life, and I'm sure you have too, all over the world, right? I've been, I put myself into extreme situations because I've tried so hard, you know? And sometimes these are the lessons that we have to go through to get absolute extreme growth. Your brain changes, your ability changes, your resilience changes, right? This is what we do. So in those moments, just like maybe you are right now, There's two views, two perspectives, two choices. And I want you to really remember and understand this because what happens is when we look at social media often, if we're in a bad place or we're not in a place that we feel we should be, might not be bad, right? And we look at social media, often it does the opposite effect of what we want, right? Yes, it produces massive amounts of dopamine and endorphins because we're looking at novelty, new things. Part of this is in the actual episode of the podcast, by the way. So, <laughs> so it's, we get that dopamine hit and we get the chemicals rushes and we feel good in the moment. That's why we keep scrolling and clicking. Yes, the algorithms are very, very clever, right? But the thing is about that is when you come off that phone or off social media, How does it feel? Well, often it can make us feel bad about ourselves or we allow the external validation or lack of the external validation to affect our own internal happiness. And the truth is about that, um, I'm leaning more to more to away from social media, right? I really, really am, especially with the state of Facebook and oh, it's just a nightmare out there, right? Does it mean it's not still cool? No, it's still cool. It is. It's just not as cool as it was a few years ago before the chaos, right? So why am I telling you this? <laughs> it's probably asking yourself, right? I, I was myself. But why am I telling you this is for this reason. Wherever you are is just where you are. Remember that. It's not who you are. And there's a whole story behind where I got that statement from my intuition going through bankruptcy and a nervous breakdown, 27 years old, putting together a resort in Fiji. And guess what? You learn. You learn and learn and learn. That's what life is. And moving back or completing the loop of what I was talking about before, um, yeah, X amount of years ago, I got myself into a mess. And, and the truth is, it's only in those moments, right, we get that fire lit. We get that burning desire going, right? We get clarity or clear on what we want. We get clear on what we do not want. We remove things that don't serve us anymore from our life, people, places, things, right? We step up. We immerse our brains in who we want to become like. We expand. We grow. We change our belief system. We immerse ourselves in a different world. And then guess what happens? Yeah, you pop out the other side. And life has changed in a beautiful way. But often what people do is they feel disempowered because they don't understand, right? They don't understand 
what mindset by design is. They don't understand what it is to build a fire mind or a fire state. They don't know what these things are. They don't understand about chemicals in the brain, how neurology works, how you're put together. And guess what? That means that we don't think we have a choice. We feel disempowered. Right, and that's what media and everything else does. It disempowers. It doesn't empower us anymore. Right? It used to empower us with the truth about what's really happening in the world, but it doesn't. What it does is it's clickbait. It is ads spend. Right? You click, they earn money. That's it. So everything becomes clickbait now to to hook you in, even if there's no information in there. So the narrative that the media can create is absolutely. It's it's profound. We've just seen it over the, the 2020, right? It's profound. And of what the effect the media can have, unless you don't watch it, right? Why am I telling you this? Because when I was in that situation X amount of years ago, I hired a coach. I was very lucky because it was actually my friend who definitely doesn't need to coach, Um but a brilliant guy. And he was just bored in between projects and actually helped me out for three months. Charged more than what I charge, but I paid it. Why? Because I wanted the learning curve to be shorter. I wanted to explode to the next stage. I wanted to make sure I got my unconscious mind dialed in so fast that this didn't become a problem. And I said to, I said to my friend who was coaching me, I said, to, I'm in a mess right now. And he went, oh, yeah, we've all been there. Now what? That was it. That was it. He said to me, literally, oh, yeah, we've all been there. Now what? So what do you think I did? Changed my perspective, leveled up, got clear, got rid of the the sadness and the stress and the fear and trained my brain to a whole new level once again. That's the thing. If you know how to win, if you've won before, then what happens is those neural pathways are already there. If you know how to compete, you know how to perform under pressure, guess what? (laughs) Those pathways are already there. We can pull them out and build them and connect them with the next stages of your business, money, success, belief systems, creativity, and link it with stages, IPOs, money, um, product launches. That's what we do. Well, that's what I do. So, so I'm going on a bit of a rant. I just worked out. I just worked out. I was going on a rant, but I really hope that helped somebody today. Hopefully, it helped you. Because again, when I was sitting there watching my five series BMW being taken away, and I say that because it meant something at the time, and um, when I was young. When that was being taken away and that intuition kicked in and shouted in my head, you know, this is just where you are. It's not who you are. And that inspired me to realize who I am inside, level up and take action. And that's the only thing that will get you to where you want to be. It's action, right? You are not going to sit there and synchronize and manifest, right? Manifest. And actually, we're talking about the woo-woo, not the science. And actually, manifesting is frequency. And frequency, um, yeah, matches where you are at. So if you're in a low frequency, then guess what? You're going to attract crap. If you're in a high frequency, having fun, playing, driving towards alignment, expanding, growing, fine-tuning your neurology, your brain, your nervous system, then guess what happens? Yeah, then good things start to magnetize. It's just how it is. So no matter where you are, it doesn't matter. If you're kicking ass right now, there's a next level. If you're not kicking ass right now, it's okay. There's a next level. So apparently that's my rant for today, but hopefully that went in your head. And speaking of going in your head, today, today's an interesting one. I'm going to share um, a bit of a training with you and... It's really cool. It's it's about habit formation. There's lots that go in there, talking about neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, and neuroscience studies. But we're also talking about the conscious, unconscious mind, and actually the 90-day or 21-day habit formation lie. Yes, it's a lie. <laughs> so we're going to go into a bit about that today. Uh, how much training, how much I put in there, I might make it into a two-part, might cut it off. 
we'll see where we go. I'm going to sit here and listen to and watch it with you. So um, what else? What else? Make sure that you're coming into the Incubator Group on Facebook. We are launching officially FireMind at the start of the year to blast it off. But I'm going to be taking pre-applications um, starting next week. So that's exciting stuff. What's the FireMind experience? You're probably asking. I'm sure you are. Well, you've got to come on over and have a little look. Also, I'm going to be launching a brilliant morning trance or visual installation audio um, by myself called Fire Mind Morning. So instead of writing stuff, instead of going through workbooks and all of that stuff, which is cool, all of that stuff's good, but the thing that everybody misses is tuning up the unconscious mind right everyone deals with the conscious mind but it's the unconscious mind in the morning that we've got to light up and fine mind's going to do that for you so um what else what else just head over to the show notes if you aren't able to get to the show notes because of your platform that's okay you can head over to andymurphy.biz B-I-Z for you Americans. That site's actually going to be changing very soon. Um, But you can still go there now if you're listening to this in the future. And we'll redirect you to the right place. So what else? Just make sure you're hanging out with me on LinkedIn. Make sure you're hanging out with me on the Incubator Group on Facebook. So Mindset by Design Incubator Group. Um, Make sure you're just connecting with me. Some way, somehow. Um, I know this year has been wild. And 2021 is going to be beautiful but that's your choice so speaking of your choice leveling up time um should we jump into today's episode yeah let's jump into today's episode and we'll see you at the end of the show You must discover your automatic behaviors and then know how to rewire them. Now, we, you know by now what automatic behaviors are. They're unconscious software, unconscious patterns, right? But the thing is, we have to know what they are because if we don't know what they are and we don't know we're forming habits, then it means we're not going to create the change that we want and we're not going to get the results that we want. And this is why this is so important. In the latest sections, we're going to get into the state creation, which I love. So instead of me just talking about it, I'm going to show you (laughs) way easier. So automated beliefs and behaviors. I'm going to talk about the 21 and 21 day and 90 day habit lie. And then we're going to look at where your habits and patterns, they started. We're going to talk briefly about epigenetics, and then I'm going to give you a masterclass in states anchoring and modeling. All of these things are so important that you understand. It's so important that you apply. I, it's probably a course or a section that you want to go over and over and over. And it really is that perspective shift that you're going to need. Because when you start to understand your behaviors, what's applying, what's on autopilot, about anchoring, about modeling the right people, about changing that state, everything is going to shift in your life and business. And that's what we want, right? Like it? Happy? Should we carry on? (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Because habits, let's talk about habits for a bit. There's a, a little bit of a section to do with habits. And to me, years ago, I didn't have a clue. It's a habit to habit, right? But there's so many different variants and so many different aspects to habits. And there's so much controversy or I'm going to show you all this stuff, right? There's so much, many different perspective on habits, but why are habits important? Why are they important, right? Well, more than 40% of the actions people perform each day are habits, right? And that's coming from Duke University in 2006. Great study, but look at what that stat just said. 40% of our actions that people perform each day are habits, right? Think about that, right? So if you know that habits are on autopilot, then isn't it about time that you got control of it? Isn't it about time that you understood them and understood truly what's playing in here? 
Okay, so if you want a richer and more meaningful life, focus on habits makes a lot of sense, and it does. And we're going to get into that. Habits are unconscious automatic patterns of how we think, feel, and act about everything in our life. The future, the past, that next task you're going to do, um, how you feel when you get up, how you feel about that person, how you motivate yourself. All of these things are deeply installed in your unconscious mind. And they all come at different levels and layers as you, as you evolve and get older. Okay, so... The thing is, anything we do without conscious thoughts is a habit. <laughs> it, it is. Anything we do without conscious thought. So me saying, think about looking at this hand, look at this hand, look at this hand. You were consciously aware of that, right? And then you went, all right, I'll look at that hand. Okay? Well, habits are different because we're not born with habits. Think about this. We're not. We get installed our habits and the decisions that we make about those experiences create the habits okay so habits are brilliant because healthy habits free up time and energy right did you hear the key word healthy habits right good habits this is why you have great ideas while you're taking a shower or walking your actions are automatic so once we can get out the way of those habits guess what that's when we get a new aha moment. And that's what we're gonna go into. Because habits really, they are integrated into our nervous system or installed in your unconscious mind. And when we understand this, habits are brilliant because they free up our mind so we can think about something else, right? So when we deepen this world-class software, it means that, for example, you're in a sales call and if you've been really good and you're really good at sales and you know your product inside and out and everything else, then what are you really doing when you're, you're communicating with a client? You're not thinking about what you're going to say. You're observing the client, reading the client and seeing where they are on the buying line, see where they are on the, um, on the progression to the close, right? So when we start to automate habits, whatever they are, right? What it does is allow space for our conscious mind so then we can make different decisions and we can make rapid decision-making processes and things like that. Cool? Awesome. So a quick little lesson because this, the habits, let's talk about the foundation that people get to hold because again, it's something I'm going to show you. I believe it's outdated and, and it, yeah, habits have changed. Well, I shouldn't say habits have changed, I should say the understanding of habits have changed because this is the classic one. So we have the three R's of habit formation. So the cue or the trigger that starts the habit, for example, traffic lights turn green, right? That activates the next thing. So that's the reminder, okay? Then what people teach, classical behavioral psychology and everywhere else, routine two, is the action that you take, which is the habit itself, right? So example, you drive through the intersection, right? So the green light's turned on, you drive through the intersection is the routine. Then this is what gets taught is the reward mechanism. And they're saying a habit is, well, let me explain. The benefit you gain from doing the habit is what installs the, the process or the pattern, right? So you get closer to your destination. So if the reward is positive, okay, think about this, then you'll have a desire to repeat the action the next time the, rem um, the reminder pops up. Eventually, this repetition will form into a new habit. So we get triggered, the routine, if, the, if it's positive, then we, we repeat it because there's a pull to that. Now, do you see the mistake? Not the mistake, but do you see what I'm going to say as the, as the issue here? I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you won't. But there's two updates that I want to, I want to give you because the old habit model to me and eight-figure thinking and what I teach is different because we have to activate that, that reward mechanism, right? That reward mechanism. What they're saying is it has to be positive. Well, that's not true, is it? That's not true right? The, the reward can be negative or positive. Now, you might be going, no, that's not true, Andy. Why are you going to create a habit that doesn't make you feel good? Ah, what did you learn um, 
or what do you know about six human needs, <laughs> right? So it's sections that you're gonna be able to go through if you haven't gone through, and it's something I'm not gonna push on right now, but I want you to understand, we have sabotage patterns, okay? What do you think a pattern is? It's a habit, right? So depending on the root cause, the driver, and the decision, it simply depends if we're gonna go into a spiral of negativity, which is gonna form a negative habit, or it's gonna drive us the opposite way and form a positive habit. Now, that's how people get drug addictions or addictions to something that is, is sabotaging them. It's because that reward mechanism doesn't have to be positive. It can just be fulfilling certain human needs that make us repeat that pattern. Or it doesn't make us feel good inside, but it creates a certain result. Does that make sense? Can you see why um, this is starting to become outdated? And this is what everyone teaches. But I looked at this years ago and went, this is wrong, right? Simple. The second thing is, is there is a fourth step because to me that there is there has to be a fourth step because what th there's a decision right whether it's conscious or unconscious there's still a decision right in that habit formation so step one we know step two but look at step four so to me this is my new model okay and i just want you to understand it because to me, it's way easier to be able to get control over your habits and create change. So let's look at the start. What they said was a, a, um, a trigger point, right? Well, what are we talking in eight figure thinker language? Anchoring. Okay, so something gets triggered, an anchor, whether it's good or bad, whatever it is, positive, negative, whatever it is, right? That still gets triggered in your brain that response or that pattern gets lit up, it gets pressed start onto the, um, onto the program, right, or the software. So then guess what? Well, we do go into an unconscious strategy, which is the routine, but then we've gone into the third strategy, which is the reward. Now, I've already told you about pain or pleasure, right? Doesn't have to be positive, far, far from it. That's why most of the world's a little screwed up. But this is the fourth step the reinforcements. What we're gonna learn in Eight Figure Think and what I want you to start being consciously aware of is what pattern or what decision you're making about the next step, okay? Because we can repeat that pattern if we want that result. But we have to start learning that is the reward giving us what we want or is it holding us back in a consumer or is it pulling us to an investor? Okay, if it's pulling into an investor, that's great. But if we're not consciously aware, and step four, the bottom one, if we're not consciously aware of, of what pattern is playing, then we can't make a new decision about it. So to me, the fourth step is the reinforcement and the reinforcement is gonna get reinforced. It's, it's, it's gonna, that pattern and those neural nets are going to complete. So in step three, we want to be able to interrupt this thing and work out, is it pain or pleasure? Is it going to lead us towards what we want or is it going to take us off on a tangent? Okay, does that make sense? I hope so, I hope so. Because it's really about you getting consciously aware of your negative patterns. It really is because, and it's also, we can do the opposite. We can get aware of our positive patterns for sure, but let's just focus on the negative. And I, I and that sounds really bad. We focus on the negative pattern so we can change it into a positive pattern. Okay. So I want you to become aware of these things. And maybe you're reading this right now, listening to me and you're getting some lots of our hard moments, right? Because what negative habits are you doing right now? Maybe the negative habit is you're sabotaging yourself by you, you're sitting on your phone, clicking through stuff, as well as watching this, or you're being distracted by other stuff and you're not being present to this. Well, I'm telling you right now, that's a sabotage pattern, okay? Hey, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a little spinner or a, um, a, um, a fidget box or a little notepad. That's a conversation for another time. That actually engages our conscious mind, so what we have unconscious 
um, no conscious resistance. So we can get straight into the unconscious mind. So those little things are really, really good, by the way. So what are you resisting expanding into? I'll say that question again. What are you resisting expanding into? Right. Is it the next stage of your business? Is it about allowing yourself to let go of the control wheel and hire the right people and put the right people in the right systems? Is it you? What is it? I don't know. But what are you resisting expanding into? Hopefully you got your notepad and pen or whatever you're making notes on and you're tracking this because the next question I want you to think about is what are you not letting yourself feel or experience? If you're holding yourself back, if you're around the wrong people, if you're not given everything you've got, if you're not in alignment with what your vision is or where you want to go, the challenge becomes is that you are starting to hit that ceiling of this box, right? And because you hit the ceiling of this box, you're making this box stronger and thicker. Now, what was level one about? Level one was about shh, breaking this box, right? Stepping, starting to step outside of it, making that decision to change. What was level two? What we're going through, right? What the simulator is going to be about for you today. It's about designing what's on the outside of this box, right? So the question is, everything that you want with your business, life, everything, remember the filter, right? It exists. Everything that you want, the money, the success, the happiness, the level of, of um, recognition, whatever it is, it all exists. So what are you not letting yourself experience? Think about that, right? Makes sense? Write those notes, maybe you want to press pause, I don't know. But think about what patterns you're playing or not experiencing or not expanding into around happiness. Do you know that life can be fun? <laughs> Do you know that business can be fun? Do you know that happiness is something that you can have anytime you want? So what is that sabotage, right? What's that habit that you're used to doing that's not giving you happiness? What about relationships? Think about this, right? If we, if we, looked, at, if we looked at this, what are you resisting expanding into? Or what are you not letting yourself feel around relationships? Maybe you've got the perfect partner, right? Maybe you have them. Maybe the perfect partner is so perfect, but you're in a bad habit that you're sabotaging that relationship. Or maybe you can look back on the past one and you sabotage that relationship. This relationship might not even be your partner. It could be a business partner or a business relationship. It's the same thing, okay? So when we are looking at what you're resisting into or what you're not letting yourself feel, understand that that is sabotaging you because of this old habit. What about money, right? What are you resisting expanding into around money? Are you focusing purely on money and you might be sitting there earning five, $10 million a year? Well, guess what? Is the money the focus, but it's attached to a bad habit that sabotages you or you spend it constantly or you makes you feel bad and the driver behind it is fear and pain, which makes you pull that money in even more but it still doesn't make you feel good, right? So that is a habit that we want to shift, right? What about business expansion, taking it to the next level? Maybe that systems, automating it, um, hiring the right people. I don't know, right? What about business speed? Because your business can expand way, way faster than whatever you think is possible, right? So if we really got back to this and resisting expanding into or not letting yourself feel around business speed and expansion do you see the habits we want to change right think about this now so we're going to jump to the next section as there's lots to go through but i know you saw this slide a couple of times because i kept popping it up but this is what i want you to understand as you're trying to as you're trying to break these habits right you're trying to recognize them as you're trying to understand that there is a conscious decision and not all habits are, are have a negative or positive response 
understand that we have to become consciously um, aware of that reward and then understand that you're creating resistance around these things, then this brings us to the next section. And the next section is what I talk about is the 21 and day, 29, 21 and 90 day habit lie, right? And it truly, truly is. It's a lie. Now, does it mean you can't form a new habit in 21 days? I'm not saying that. Does it mean you can't form a new habit in 90 days? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when someone says to you, it takes 21 days or 90 days to form a new habit, and they're not telling the truth, right? And it doesn't mean that they're lying. It means they've been told a misconception. So when you start to understand this and what I'm about to show you, you start to understand that you can build this muscle as fast or as slow as you want. It simply depends on how you're expanding and when you're understanding this new habit formation that I'm trying to show you, okay? So this is where it all started with, your, with the 21-day habit, right? I don't know if you know this book. It was made in the 1970s, Psycho-Cybernetics. Really, really cool book. Lots of NLP and brilliant personal development concepts in there. 30 million plus books sold right, by Maxwell Maltz. Absolutely um, brilliant guy. I'm gonna show you more about those stats in a minute. But I love this quote by him. Man alone can direct his success mechanism by the use of imagination and imagining ability, right? Think about that. What did I show you in level one? Everything starts in your imagination. Everything, right? And even your new habits because it's a brilliant book full of brilliant concepts, including the concept of the 21 days to form a new habit, right? So either the challenge was either a marketer came along and created it into a new media bias or it was created through a game of telephone, right? But either way, it's not right because Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon in the 1950s. He started to noticing a pattern among his patients, right? So after taking surgery, maybe it was a nose job or whatever it was, he found it would take patients about 21 days to adjust to seeing their new face. Okay? Don't know whether you knew this stuff, but this is where it comes from. Also, when a patient had either an arm or a leg amputated, Maltz also noticed his patient would sense a phantom limb for an average of 21 days before, again, the brain would make the adjustment. Right now, we understand this is also we're in uh, a lot later than 1950. Okay, so what I want you to really understand we've got a lot more um, results and information on this, and I'm about to show you that stuff. But in, in 1950, they were showing that it took an average of 21 days before that brain would adjust. Now, this was just the concept or an observation by Maxwell Maltz, right? So, this prompted Maltz to start thinking about his own life and the new habits he was making. So he also noticed that it took himself about 21 days to form a new habit, right? Maltz wrote about these experiences and said, these and many other commonly observed phenomena tend to show that it requires a, I'm going to use the key word, a minimum of 21 days to form an old mental image to dissolve, for an old mental image to dissolve and a new one to gel. Now, what did I say? A minimum of 21 days. Okay, so when he said 21 days, this is the word that got picked up on, right? It was 21 days, but it was a minimum of 21 days. And in 1960, Maltz published, along with other thoughts on behavioral change in a book, Psycho-Cybernetics, and, and this really influenced a, all the superstars over the years including Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, like a very long, big game of telephone. People forgot that he said a minimum of 21 days and the media shortened it to, it takes 21 days to form a new habit, <laughs> okay? Again, whether that's right, that's wrong, I'm just showing you the background, okay? So this is a modern study and this is what I want to show you by Dr. Philip Lely, who's a researcher associated in health, um, in health psychology. And 
So little Lely, as I say, the London University published a, story, a study in the European Journal of Social Psychology researched how long to form a new habit, okay? This is updated information showing deeper results, and this is really, really cool stuff I'm about to show you. In 2009, a new study was taken on, and it was now accepted, okay? So I also did a bit of research on um, Philippa Lely, and she's real. There's an email address, uh, her, even the address where she works, and the university that she's at, right? So that's actually the paper. So when people argue this point, or you know, the, or I see all this media bias out there, meaning that all of these programs, 21, 21 days to form a new habit, 21 days to form a new habit. Years ago, I, I fell into that, to that understanding too, because I believed them. But when doing my own research, again, things change. So this was the modern study, and this was the actual paper that was created. But what the study was, was really something really cool. It was 96, they took 96 people over six weeks, and each person chose different habit they want to form. Simple stuff, simple stuff, like running, drinking more water. Speaking of drinking more water, let's have a little drink. So, so 96 people over six weeks, okay? So what happened was, Philippa Lely's study showed it took between, listen to this, 18 to 254 days to form a new habit. That's a little different to, um, to 90 days or 21 days, right? 18 to 254 days to form a new habit. Very, very different, right? So. What that means is the results, the average amount of time was 66 days to form a new habit, right? So 66 days to form a new habit is not 90 days, it's not 21 days, it's not 254 days. Understand, it's the average is 66 days. And I'm gonna show you why that's relevant to you in a moment, right? And why you might be and sabotaging yourself through so many ways. And the reason I'm showing you this as an eight-figure thinker, we have to take responsibility for what's being processed or what habits we're forming in our head. But we also have to have the relevant information because what did I say about the personal development industry? That's right, they regurgitate the same crap. The same, not saying it's all crap, but there's a lot of it's crap. And it's not, there's no true wisdom behind it or experience, right? So if it takes 66 days to form a new habit, I'm going to show you in a couple of slides why this is so important for you to understand. So crew, there we go. <clears throat> the end of episode 289. I could go on, as I said, I left it a little longer than where I was going to, but do you realize now? how important actual um, visualization, habit formation, the lies that you've been told through through media and people selling products and all of that crap. And also understand that most people who are coaches don't know what they're talking about, right? They don't. They've only been doing it for a year or two tops, right? They don't have wisdom of thousands and thousands of the best people in the world or or whatever you're doing, right? I just know my lane and I help high performers and entrepreneurs get to a whole new level they didn't know was possible. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And there's one of the, the key ways that we do it. But again, it's it's programming the unconscious mind and yeah, and getting conscious control. That's the difference. This isn't talk therapy. This is not personal development. This is not self-help. This is mental performance. And that's what I do. So if that all resonates with you, head over to the show notes, right? You're going to be excited next week because you can get um, in as an early bird into finding out exactly what the fire mind experience is, which is it's mind-blowing. <laughs> I promise you that. It's going to be the best thing you've ever done for yourself in 2021. Or 100 million percent. Um, so what else? Just 
keep kicking ass. Remember, routines, habits are how you program the unconscious mind. The visuals are the language. I've shown you so much today. I hope you loved it. Go share it with as many people as you can. Go and listen to it again and really use this podcast like a library. I want you to go back and check all of the episodes out and use them to train your brain. Okay, crew, that's it. I love you. Until the next time. Um, Why don't you smile for me? Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy. We'll catch you next time.